My name is David Spurgis from Plain. Um, I, I won't need, can you hear me? Really clear? Okay, that's what university does to you if you go to university. You get very loud and obnoxious. Okay, so that's, I, I ended up developing my voice while I was at university, which was a marvelous thing. Then I became a, uh, to do different workshops, different parts of Canada. So right now I'm retired. Uh, Person. Uh, I live in London, and sorry it took me to get here, but I didn't realize they have a bunch of uh, uh, groundhogs digging up London. Everywhere I turned there was a barricade. So it took me actually half an hour to get out of London, and then almost another half hour to find you. It's so dark here. When you become a city, in yes, when you become a city Indian and go back on the road, there's nothing but dark, and you forget well, how wonderful and beautiful that is. You're so used to lights when you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night. So it's really nice to be here, and I brought my beautiful son, Lahota, and he's he's going to be touring with me now. He, he needs to learn this. He needs to know what I did in my younger days. I'm old now, I guess, and he'll be attending a lot of my workshops now. We had a good talk, and he's willing to do that because part of it is the language. Um, he understood the language when he was little, and of course you go, you know, grow up and you kind of forget those. He, he, he understands, but he, he's learning how to speak as well, and learning how to use the drum, and to tell stories. And the reason I decided, Naomi didn't know I was going to do this, I haven't had my drum out in 10 years. Um, I dealt with a, an illness of my daughter, Nadonis, who just passed. Um, August 31st of this is I wrote it. So, in much discussion in my spirit, I decided to bring my drum out again and do storytelling. And that's how I became a writer, is through my drum. Okay. So the one I'd like to uh, share with you is called uh, Nanabuju Minwa Wabudu. That's uh, Nanabush and the Little Rabbit. And I'll need some sound effects, okay? So I'll let you know when I need some sound effects. And Abujo helped the Great Spirit create everything we see today on Mother Earth. The plant, the flower, the tree, even in the way the waters run. One day, on his beautiful journey, looking at all the beauty, he heard this noise come out of the bush. It went like this. Uh, can we make that sound? Uh, it's like you had a rumble in your stomach. So he kept on his journey, every soul looking under the bush behind a tree, under a rock, and still, he heard this sound. Uh, well, he continued his journey, and he came up to a little stream in the clearing, and he sat beside the stream, and he got out his medicine pouch, he burnt his sage and his sweet grass, of course, when you do that, you have to have a prayer. And Abuju stood in the clearing by the stream with his prayer. He went to my dumb jump the door, he went to kick on me down, he went to put on me, he me down, he went to put on me down, he went to put on me down, he went to put on me down, he went to sat down beside the stream and clear. And the sound was following him. And it got louder. <laughs> Must be hard doing that after eating, eh? Wow. He realized he was starving. He had nothing to eat that day. So he got out his drum. Played loud with his drum, and he played 
for hours for all the animals in the bush. One animal heard Nanabuyu's song. It was Gog the porcupine. Old Gog come wilding out of the prickly bush. He shook off his prickly thorns and he sat right there. And he looked up at Nanabuyu. Nanabuyu looked up at him. Nanabuyu played for hours. Gog the porcupine. Another animal heard this beautiful song Nanabuyu was playing. It was Gigakan, the old turtle. He crawled out of the stream and sat beside Gog the porcupine. And his head was bobbing, his feet was tapping. He loved this music. All of a sudden there was a screech out of nowhere. Hey, what are you doing down there? It was Cuckoo Coo, the grumpy old owl of the forest. Then Abuju kept his drum going. Who awoke? The wise old Cuckoo Coo, the owl. And then who says, I did, kind sir, come down, listen to my drum, play a beautiful song. Well, Kukuku the owl knows that Nanabuyu is a trickster, but he had to learn the song. So he flew from the tallest tree in the forest, he circled the stream in the clearing, and sat right there beside Gog, Jikan, there was Kukuku. And Abuju started his music again with his drum, and he played for hours. The animals thought this was a beautiful song. All of a sudden, this funny looking little rabbit come out of the bush, all excited. He jumped over a log, over a rock, over the stream in the clearing and sat beside Kukuku, the owl. And back then, if nobody knows that rabbits and cats, they are cousins. Many years ago, that rabbit never had big long ears. They kind of looked like cats with fluffy tails. And through the source of the Great Spirit, had evolved and had real long ears. Well, Nanabuja is really happy now. He has four delicious animals. And the more he stared down at the animal, the louder his stomach got. Nanabuju played louder for hours. All the animals loved this music. And he stopped, and the grumpy old owl says, Nanabuju, why do you stop that beautiful song? He says, well, there's rules to the song, and the rules are each one of you animals have to turn your heads around and close your eyes and just use your ears to listen. Wow, there was Gog the porcupine. He turned around, closed his eyes. Mijikant the turtle turned around and closed his eyes. And that grumpy old owl, you know where owls can just pivot their head. So he just turned his head right around and closed his big old eyes. And that tiny, funny looking little wobbly turned around and closed his eyes. And he sat and listened and listened. And the rules were not to turn around when the drum stopped, but to listen for more music. Well, the Andrew kept his drum going for all the animals in the air. Sometimes he got loud. None of the animals opened their eyes, or did they see why he was so quiet? Then out of nowhere, he heard screaming, Run back to the forest! Nana, well, she's going to eat us! Well, Rabbit's heart was just going. He had that poor little rabbit in a headlock, trying to grab a, grab a hold of him. Did you ever try to grab a rabbit? You know, slippery. Well, Nana, who 
you, you have that rabbit by the head, and he's pulling and tugging. Well, in all the commotion, wobbly zones, scream and run, the old owl is so scared, he flew back up into his bird. Got the porcupine wall as fast as he could under the prickly bush. He can't dive back in the stream in the clearing. And in all the commotion of all the animals was running, then the bushy would let wobbles and go. And that poor little rabbit ran and he ran, his heart was beating. He was scared. He got so scared he wasn't paying attention. And he banged right into a hardwood tree. Well that poor little rabbit was never seen again. Well, Robert grabbed his drum again. Yeah, and the Boozer grabbed his drum again. And this time he had to play a sad song for all the animals to hear. Because he didn't get nothing to eat that day. And if you walk through the forest, you could hear the sound in the wind of Nana Bush and his hungry stomach. And to this day, that why Wobblezone has very long ears because Nana Boogie stretched them all out of state, pulled his ears left and right. And when you look at a rabbit and he's got that little pink nose, it's still pink and sore from banging into that tree. He got. Now that story turned into this story. This is my number one book uh, that I wrote back in the early 80s. It's called Eagle Feather. And it's about a little boy. His name is Nushan. And that means grandchild. And we have Mashomas, who is grandfather. And his grandfather knew he was going to pass to the other world. But he had to leave his new shan a present. And this was the present. And if you want to see the pictures, you can move up. I'll try to show them best I can. Okay? I remember when new shan and I would go for walks in the bush. The show miss would tell me stories of when he was a little boy and legends that his father told him. As we would walk in the bush, Mishomas would show me what plants were all right to eat and what was good in medicine and what was bad. Mishomas could speak English and Ojibwe, but spoke mostly Ojibwe, especially when he had tea with no food. And if you notice some of the illustrations why I had produced for this book, You'll notice, if you take a close look at the pictures, that the characters will have symbols of bears. So if you turn them upside down, it looks like bears. Okay, being that's my clan. So I, I put it in, into this, uh, into the artwork. And the artworks were, were pretty big, the size of a piece of crystal board. I like spring and summer with Mishomas the best. He would take me camping in the bush and we would make a fire. Then Mishomas would beat his drum softly and chant songs in Ojibwe. It was almost three months since Mishomas and I walked in the bush together. But I would go visit him at his bedside every day, and we would talk of when we walked through the bush and things we would find. Then Mishomas would tell us legends and stories of the old days, and I would sit and listen. We also, in the background, I created some images. If you look at this page when Mishomas and New are talking, there's different images. No Quince finished my traditional outfit to wear when I danced in the summer powwows. He had worked on it all winter, but I knew it wouldn't be much fun this year because Mishomas was sick. 
And we always dance together. So there you're starting to miss his grandfather. One day, Mishomas told me that he would not be able to dance with me at the Powell this year. He said the Great Spirit will soon be sending an owl for him, and he would join Mother Earth. God, he's being just stuck together. Yeah. Turn that next beat for me. Perfect. Thank you. The day of our truce to Apollos came, and Mishomus was still ill. So I wanted to stay with him at his bedside, but no Chris, and probably Mishomus would have been upset if I didn't dance this year. So I went. As I was going through Grant's entry, all I thought about was walking through the bush with Mishomus and the fun we had camping, talking and finding things there. But my heart was sad knowing he was still ill and still in bed. After the snake dance, the chief called me up to the grandstand as he announced that I was to receive an eagle feather that Mishomus was giving to me. As the chief placed the eagle feather on my rope, the drummer started chanting, and I had to dance around the grandstand on my own first, and then with my family and friends. And that's what we do at our crucial gathering when receiving the effort. After the ceremony was over, I rushed back to see Mishoma to ask him why I received the eagle feather. I sat beside him, excited and confused. Mishoma asked me why I had a puzzled look on my face, and I told him that I didn't understand why I received his eagle feather. Mishoma placed his hand on my shoulder and told me that I, have, that I had achieved a good deed from the first day he held me in his arms as a baby. You are my new chant, and I could not have asked for anything more, he said. So just being his grandchild was enough for his grandchild. And that brings you back to stories that my grandma would tell me of my grandfather would walk the floors with me, because I was a kind of honorary baby, and he was the only one who would walk the floors with me for hours. To this day, as I walk through the bush, I can still hear Mishomus tell his legend and stories of the old days and the sound of his drum in the wind. And I will always remember what Mishomus said to me before Mother Earth claimed him. He said, Nushan, as you walk through the bush on a summer's day, listen, for nature has sound. The sound of leaves and twigs stirring under your moccasins, the sound of the wind singing through the great trees, a flock of geese overhead beating their wings like our feet, and the song of my father in your heart. So like the eagle, stand proud, for you are my new son. So this was uh, number one book. At the back is uh, my younger years in university <laughs> wearing my eagle feather that I received. One day. And I received my eagle feather, not through my grandfather, but I donated a bunch of artwork to Kettle Point Community back in the early 80s, and they gave me eagle feathers as my gift. So, anyway, that was eagle feather and art. Eagle. Do you have any questions? We're done. Oh. Yeah, sometimes I got very bad neuropathy through diabetes, so that's why I wear these. But I'm slowly getting a studio going in my place, and I'm going to try and see what I can do. Yeah, I'm not going to give up. That that word doesn't 
work with me and my vocabulary. I, I don't feel anything with my hands at all, and, but I can't feel to write my name, but hopefully I could hold a big paintbrush and see what that can do. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming out. I hope you enjoyed your dinner. I enjoyed uh, being here. I haven't done a workshop in years, so it felt good to come out and entertain everybody. I hope you learned a little bit. Okay. Bye bye, Mingua. Thank you, guys.